Hi, my name is Mike Webb with Dental Technology Solutions, a division of Whitmix Corporation, and I'd like to show you guys today the unboxing steps for your three-shape scanner and PC tower. For setup of your three-shape scanner, you'll need the following items, first being the PC computer tower, as well as a monitor. So included with your PC tower, you're going to find a DVI video cable. You will also find a power cable as well as a keyboard and mouse that should all be included in the same package. So the second item that you'll need for your three-shape system is going to be the computer monitor. And the monitor will typically come separate from the actual base itself, uh, and it will usually come with this VGA cable included, and you can typically recognize the VGA cable by its blue color. Uh, so one of the first things that I've done here is I've gone ahead and flipped the monitor over face down, and on the back here we can see all the different inputs what we're going to do is we're going to unscrew this VGA cable and uh, there's two tabs on each side of the cable that you can unscrew and if you can't do this by hand you may have to use a screwdriver but once you've loosened that cable all you should have to do is just pull straight out and that cable will come detached and at this point you can go ahead and toss this cable or set it aside because we're not going to be using it the second cable that we're going to use is going to be the power cable and we'll set this up with the, uh, computer uh, the computer monitor on the base when we get to that point of the setup. So this is the crate that your three-shape scanner is going to ship in and it's going to include eight different tabs that fasten this lid down in place. Uh, I've gone ahead and loosened uh, six of those eight and uh, just to show you how we can unfasten these clips here, if you push in on this little tab below that uh, silver clip and push straight up, the tab itself will just pop right out and once all eight of these have been uh, have been loosened, what we can do is just simply pull the top of this crate directly off and set this aside. So the next step, what we're going to do is remove the protective foam that holds this scanner in place during shipping. We can just pull that straight up, and we'll set that aside as well. And then the next step that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove some of the documentation that's included with the scanner. So inside here we have a quick setup guide as well as the outgoing inspection certificate from 3Shape. And we also have the calibration kit which we'll go ahead and set aside as well. Uh, also inside of the scanner, usually tucked in a corner, you're going to find the power cable for the scanner itself. So we'll set that aside, leaving just the scanner by itself in the crate. So the last item that we're going to remove here from the crate is the scanner itself and simply just grab this on both sides, get a firm grip and pull straight up and we'll just place the scanner facing outward on the table and at this point we can go ahead and remove the plastic from the scanner itself. So we're going to go ahead and remove the plastic from the scanner. kind of fold it down around the outside of the scanner and if you need to you can tilt it to one side make sure that you do not pull it along the door or pick it up along the door and you can kind of just lift it up and remove the plastic from the bottom so what we're going to go ahead and do here is remove these blue tabs uh, or pieces of tape that hold this scanner door in place during transit. And again, these items we can set aside. And uh, if you want, you can go ahead and remove this protective film as well from the scanner door. Just make sure you hold it in place while you're removing it. So the next step here is to open the front door of the scanner. You can usually do this by uh, pushing it straight up. It has struts that assist you in that measure. And inside we're going to find a foam brace that holds this scanning table steady during shipping. 
what we're going to do is using this little finger hole back here in the back, we're going to place our finger in that hole and pull straight out, up and out. And it removes this foam brace that holds it in, in place. So the next item here is the computer monitor. And we're going to want to go ahead and plug in our power cable and the video cable that's going to go also to the back of the computer. So we'll start with the power cable. We want to usually plug these cords in before we've mounted the monitor on the base, just because it's easier to access. So again, we have the monitor facing down on the table. We're going to go ahead and plug the, again, the female end of our power cable into the back of the monitor. And with our DVI video cable, and on this one it doesn't matter which end, uh, there is a specific orientation, so you want to make sure that this little flat connector right here matches with the flat female insert on the bottom of the monitor. And once you plug that in, there's also two small screws on each side of the cable that just hold that securely in place. So once that you've gotten these items secured, we're going to now go ahead and mount the base of the monitor onto the back. So in mounting the base to the back of the monitor, one of the first things that we'll notice here on the actual base itself where it mounts is that you're going to have two small tabs and you're also going to have two slots that correspond on the top of the monitor back here in the back. So what we'll do is just simply slide those tabs into the slot while we have the angle like so and then we'll just drop the base and it'll snap into place. So now that we've got our monitor set up to the base, what we'd like to go ahead and do is plug the video cable that's coming out of the monitor into the back of the computer tower. So if you'll notice here on the DVI cable itself, there's a, again, a small little flat prong here, and we just want to line it up with the female socket side on the back of the computer tower. So we'll simply line those up and this should plug straight in. And once we've got that in there, again, we have the two screws on the side that we'll just need to fasten in there to retain that cable. And hand tight should be good enough. So part of setting up the computer that we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and plug in our peripheral devices, which are the mouse and the keyboard. And we're also going to plug in the power cable uh, to the back of the PC power. So we're going to start out here with the mouse USB port. And what we're going to do is we're going to plug this into one of the open ports here on the bottom. And the second one is going to be the keyboard USB. Again, we're going to plug this in down here. Now, if you notice, there are also some USB ports up above here. And uh, there's a sticker here that comes with the PC towers that ship from 3Shape stating that only the scanner should be plugged into these. So please leave these ports open. And then the last item that we're going to plug in here is going to be the power cable. So we're going to take the female end of the power cable. It only goes in one way, the power supply, up toward the top of the tower. Just plug that in and make sure it's nice and snug. So what we're going to talk about here also is the three shape calibration kit and its contents. And I'm going to show you what we're going to use to hook the scanner up to the back of the computer tower. So we're going to start by opening up the calibration kit. There's two tabs here, and then the kit should just lift open. And inside this calibration kit, you have a few different items here to work with. Uh, you have the USB data cable that will connect the scanner to the computer. You also have the power brick that you're going to use the power cable that came tucked in the corner of the scanner crate earlier uh, with. And you also have the USB dongle. So this is what your three-shape licensing is held on. And this is going to control the software. We'll plug that into the computer here in just a, uh, just a moment. Uh, you also have three of these three-shape scanning plates. So this is what you're going to be placing the items on that will be going inside of the scanner later on. You also have the scanning clay. It's blue tack scanning clay. So this is going to hold the model onto those scanning plates as you're scanning those items. Up here we have the calibration kit, or the, excuse me, the calibration item, and you're going to use this for calibrating the scanner. You'll do this approximately once or twice a week, depending on how, how often you use the scanner. 
Uh, the last item that we have here is going to be the uh, Pontic scanning pin. So this is going to be used with the unique feature of being able to scan in uh, your smile libraries, personalized smile libraries into the three-shaped dental system. Uh, so basically what you'll do with this item is you can take a waxed up Pontic and uh, stick it on the end of this pen. Uh, using the scanning clay, you could place this on the scanning plate and then uh, the system will capture the anatomy of that waxed up Pontic for you to reuse time and time again with your future cases. Uh, so those are the items that are included with the calibration kit. Uh, so of all of these items, two of which we're going to be using is going to be the USB data cable and the power brick item. It also has a cable attached to it. And we'll go ahead and set these out separate from the kit and we can go ahead and close that off and set it aside. All right, so we've got three cables here that we're gonna be using, uh, two of which are power cables. And then of course, this is the data cable that's gonna go from the scanner into the computer. Uh, so what we're going to start out with by doing is getting uh, using the power cable that came in the corner of the crate with the scanner and the power brick that came from the calibration kit. We're just going to use this female ended connector and plug it in to the end of that power brick. Uh, so we can go ahead and at this point plug one end into the back of the scanner and we're also going to plug in the USB cable. So uh, we'll start with the USB cable. And if you'll notice here on the USB cable, there's two different ends. One is a standard USB cable end on the left, and this is what's going to go into the computer tower. Uh, the other end is a um, standard uh, USB, almost like a printer cable that you would see, um, that you may be familiar with. So what we'll go ahead and do is, using this uh, second end, we'll plug into the back of the scanner. And that only goes in one way. And then from the power brick, we have a small little power socket adapter here. So we're going to use this and plug this in to the power port on the back of the scanner as well. Uh, so if you'll notice here on the back of the scanner, and this is before we've plugged anything into an actual electrical outlet, uh, you have the power switch, which should at this point be in the off position. Uh, you have a exhaust fan that's back here, as well as the USB port and the power port. So now that we've plugged the USB cable into the back of the scanner, uh, we're going to take the other end of that USB cable and plug it into the back of the computer into one of the open USB ports. Now if you'll notice on this computer tower we actually have quite a few different ports to choose from uh, and there's a sticker stating to use these USB ports only for the scanner. Uh, so you want to make sure that you heed that request uh, all of these USB ports share the same bus in terms of traffic, so you wouldn't want to put another peripheral device or a wireless adapter or any type of printer into these USB ports because it could possibly interfere with the data that's coming from the scanner. Um, your additional ports that you have on the back of the PC tower are down here below where we plugged in both the mouse and the keyboard, and you have an additional two ports here. Um, you're going to be using one of these ports to plug in that three-shaped license dongle uh, that we spoke about a little bit earlier, which we'll do here in just a second. So we've taken the three-shaped dongle out of the calibration kit. And what we want to go ahead and do is remove the top from this USB key. You can just pull that right off. And uh, just like a USB thumb drive, we're going to plug it into one of the peripheral device ports that we have down here on the bottom of the computer tower. And you want to make sure you plug this into the back, that way you avoid running into this dongle or knocking it off during normal operation. A necessary component to working with your three-shaped system that will be required is a working internet connection. This needs to be a broadband connection, so either cable or DSL internet. So in order for this to work, you'll need a wired connection from either your router or your cable modem or your DSL modem that will go directly into the back of the computer. And what this will look like is like an oversized phone jack. And of course the cord as well will be double the size of a regular phone cable. So you just plug this in one way, you should hear it snap, and that cord will be securely in place. 
Now that you've connected all of your data connections on the back of the PC tower, the monitor, and the three-shape scanner, we're going to go ahead and start plugging these devices in one by one to a power adapter or the surge protector. Alternatively, you can use an uninterruptible power supply or a battery backup system to further protect these devices in the event of an unexpected power outage. So now we're going to go ahead and start plugging in our devices to the electrical strip that we have. We'll start off with the three-shape scanner, and there's really no sequence to how you plug these in. Uh, typically, I also recommend that you turn this, the power switch on the surge protector to the off position. And as you've uh, seen that we've plugged these in, it's really hard to differentiate one from another. So it's probably not a bad idea if you have a label maker in your lab to go ahead and label each of these cords, uh, depending on which device that these are plugged into. That way you can uh, fairly distinguish one from another if you ever need to unplug these in the future. So now that you've hooked up all of your data connections and your power connections between the computer, the monitor, and the three-shaped scanner, what we're going to go ahead and do now is boot into Windows by turning on the computer, and we're going to go ahead and start our very first calibration. So now that we've gone ahead and booted up the computer, we're going to be looking at a Windows login screen here, and by default your password should be the word SCAN, all in lowercase. For some reason, if this is not the case, please consult the help documentation that came with your computer or your scanner. So the first step that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and log in by typing in the word scan. And we're going to give Windows just a moment here to boot up any applications that may be running in the background. This will give this computer time to start up all of those. And once we're satisfied that Windows is completely open and any additional applications that need to run are open in the background. We can go ahead and reach around to the back of the scanner and switch this to the on position. Okay, and we'll just simply flip this power to the on position. So immediately upon turning the power on to the back of the scanner, you'll notice that there will be a small hum coming from the inside. That's the exhaust fan on the back of the scanner. So now that we've switched the power onto the scanner, we'll also notice that in the bottom right hand corner of our screen here on Windows, you should have either an icon that, that displays safely remove hardware and eject media, or you may receive a little pop-up window that says your hardware has been successfully installed. Once you see this notification in the bottom right hand corner, you can then, on the bottom left hand side of your screen, you should see a scan server 5 icon. So what I'm just going to do is double click that. And this is going to start up the scanner so you'll hear the motors inside move around and you'll also get a window here in the center of the screen. So obviously since this is the first time that we've started up the scan server with this particular scanner, it's going to tell us that the calibration has not uh, been performed yet. So we would want to go through that uh, process now. 